Okay, today at, we do our own stunts, uh, stunts auto body. Uh, say hi to the crowd. Yeah, we're fixing to switch cameras in a minute so, so you can see what Seth is up to. But one thing I want to talk to you about is, we, okay, like we're restoring this car. Like, see the motor and everything? It's all pretty. Uh, we have blocked and blocked and blocked till our arms fell off. This car, I want I want this car to be like a show, like my, my opus, you know. But one thing I want to say is if you're in, if you want to build your own car, okay, there's no such thing as a perfect car, but there is such thing as critics. Everybody's a critic, right? So if you go to build your own car, and I want to give you some advice today on a uh, man, beware of some of uh, some some pitfalls in building your own car. For one thing, I want to say <coughs> when you watch the YouTube channels and you see these people like they'll buy a bunch of new everything. They'll get an old car and they'll strip every bad thing off of it and then they'll go to these providers of aftermarket parts and they, they weld it back together and shazam, they got a brand new car. You need to understand is, is these channels, these channels are allowed to cherry pick their aftermarket parts. When you go buy a rusted out old car, and you take a sawzall and cut it to pieces, and you call these providers, you get the first box on the shelf. Mm -hmm. They don't cherry pick for you, and you don't get to go cherry pick there. So what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna get crap that don't work. I wanna show you something. We have restored, we have restored dozens, and I mean dozens and dozens of Chevelles, Camaros, Mustangs, Chevy trucks. All your models of Chevy trucks. El Caminos. El Caminos out the wazoo. Okay, we have enough leftover parts around here. We could build an El Camino. Right. We could build a Frankenstein car. Yeah, right. That's a Johnny Cash car. Oh. Yeah, anyway, but what I show is, okay, the aftermarket windshields on most old cars, they're pretty good. They're thinner, they're not as heavy, but they, they serve the purpose, right? Yep. I have yet to buy an aftermarket windshield rubber that fits. Yep. I mean, I have so, yet to buy. I have bags of windshield rubbers that, that people are just not the right size. They're they're not. They'll tell you, well, cut it in the middle. I don't want to cut it in the middle. So what I'm going to do on this car, and what I recommend, like this old car, and most of these, old, you find a lot of these old cars in big garage cap. I used to be bad. I would come up here with my knife. I would stab it in right there. And I would come across, I'd cut the rubber off, set the glass out, get a new glass, get a new rubber, and then I would fight and fight and fight, trying to get that new rubber to fit. They don't work. Yep. So if you have to buy one, get ready to fight. Yep. Most m m later model cars like that El Camino over there, that Camaro back there, they just glue in. Okay, they just glue in. But on these, take your time, like on this Dodge, unzip this. See, it's got a zipper, and when you get it put together, what will happen is, after you get this put together, you're going to rub this down with oil, and you're going to come across, you're going to press this zipper together, and that's what tightens up and seals the glass. Now, once I get this zipper unzipped, see here, okay, I unzip this, I'm going to run my screwdriver back under here, and I'm going to make sure it's loose from the glass, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's going to happen is, and I, you do you, but I'm willing to put on a pair of coveralls, combat boots, safety goggles, welding gloves, and get inside and kick that windshield out to yep. save this rubber. Yep. Okay, when I save this rubber, I want to take a paint thinner and a rag, and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to clean it. Now, sometimes saving the rubber is not an option for you because your rubber might be broken and deteriorated. I've got a 70 model Dodge truck I'm building for me. That that window rubber's deteriorated, so I'm gonna have to do what I have to do. Uh, I got a 90 model Dodge truck of my own. I was building it for Samuel, but we decided to go a different direction, but putting the windshield in it was murder because the rubber sucked. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you something else on aftermarket. Yeah. Okay. Okay, like when you buy these quarter panels, this car was creamed down the side 
so we yep. had to put a quarter panel on it. This quarter panel over here was rotted away. Now this is what I want to show you. I've got another video I made, but I'm just going to tell you. When we bought this quarter panel, we bought the full quarter panel. And it was wavy as water on a lake, man. It was wavy. So it took a lot of body work to get it flat. But when we got it, well, when we got it cut off, this inner fender was also rotted. Yeah, so we it. bought it. Now the inner fender in here did not have the same wheel opening hole as the quarter panel. Matter of fact, if you made it touch here, there was a gap back here you could put three fingers in. When you buy these panels, you buy two panels, no two panels aftermarket fit. I want to show you something. This is a 1970 Roadrunner we're doing. Now this was the first time I ever went into an extensive thing like this. The old car was not too bad, bad, but we had to put this quarter panel in because it had went and something that creased down the side and turned it inside out. Now come on, I'll show you something. This is a brand new quarter panel. I put it on with the door on. So right. it fits the door perfectly. It come up here, it fit this. It fit this pretty good. I mean, it had to do a little bit of work. But we got it welded on. I set it, the edge with the trunk. But look here. When I bought this panel, this is a new quarter panel. Mm -hmm. This is this new tray, right? Yeah. See how it lines up here? But look, man, that's three quarters of an inch off down here. See the gap there? Yep. Now, see, I got a good quarter inch gap right here on my trunk. But that, look at that. It's big. See, I'm going to have to slice this all the way around here, bend this down to where it's close enough to the trunk, and then I'm going to have to put in a piece of metal here and weld in. And what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is if you think that you're going to go cut your car into pieces and then go order all your parts, that's not going to happen. That's not how it works. So what we did after learning that lesson, now a lot of these old B-body Dodges, this is all rotted out. This this is classic B-body rod. Man, go ahead and buy the new panel. Go ahead and buy the new quarter. But when you do, get ready to slice off the parts you need. If if you buy this, if you have rot here, if you have rot here, don't cut out this whole tray. No. Cut this piece off, replace that part. If you have rot here, you can buy that piece that goes here. Don't cut out your whole quarter. Replace just what you need to replace. Right. Since this right here, you know, that had a little bit of rust earlier, and what an, a previous shop had done was they just cut out that rusty spot. They did a good job and replaced that with metal and left the tray. Okay, so what we done is because because we didn't want to start whacking all this up because this aftermarket's never going to fit like this. All of our damage was down here low. Don't ever buy a partial. If you buy the partial, it's never made right. Go ahead and spend the money and buy the whole quarter panel. It costs more, pay that. It don't matter. Because if you buy the partial, you're going to have problems. So what we did was we bought the whole quarter panel and cut it off right there on that body seam. I didn't, and you'll see this. If you go back and watch the first Fast and Furious movie, where Dom takes Brian into the garage to show him the charger, you're looking at the chromed out Hemi. It looks great. But if you'll back up and rewind and focus on the car, you will see a series of spot wheels right down this quarter panel. So when you buy that crimping tool and it has the spot well plug and you boom, 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 and you overlap that metal, it, that's the way they tell you to do it. But what will happen is, is because there's two layers of metal, it will heat and shrink different at temperatures in the sun. And sometimes at some temperatures, you will see your welds. What we did here, we cut it on that line. I took my time with my big welder and I welded that solid. From there, there is no overlap. That's a solid butt weld all the way down. So you get up inside of it, you can't see it. I mean, it looks it looks good. So, uh, I just want to say, man, these shows, like, 
but I'm not going to name names. But these shows where you see a car roll through, and hey, that car sold for $150,000, and there's one like it behind Mama's barn. So you go buy it, drag it up, cut it to pieces, max out your Visa card or your Capital One or whatever, buying a bunch of crap, and then you're in this deep on a project that you get disheartened, you want to give up, because people like me, I love to go on Marketplace and find a project where somebody has given up and buy it at 25% of what it's worth. Or somebody else that bought all the parts. My brother-in-law one time paid $1,700 for a 68 Mustang with all new interior, two new quarter panels, two new doors. That was four leftover parts. I Man, they, were, they weren't after my doors before. And it had a new fender. It had a 289. I mean, somebody had bought the project, invested thousands of dollars, and they realized they were in over their head. So one thing is, is do not let, do not let these people selling these parts allow you to get in over your head. They'll, they'll do it. They will sell you all the stuff because once you bought it, they're done with you. Whether or not your project gets fixed, they don't care. So like I said, for one thing, don't project in over your head. If you buy a car, and it's got some dents in it, and it's got a little bit of rust, but it's solid old car, man, get it running. Put new brakes on it. Go out. Have some fun with it. Have fun with the car so that you don't wind up, so that you don't wind up taking something that you have no sentimental value in at all, cutting it into pieces, and turning it into something that you wished you'd never bought. It's going to be hard on your marriage. It's going to be hard on your finances. Right. And you're just going to wind up giving it away to somebody that's going to go ahead and maybe put it together right in front of you. You know, so one thing is, is know your skill level. If you're not a master restorer, then don't try to bite into a project that's too much for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, here, hold on. Give me the camera. Paul, what have you got you would like to add to this? Well, one thing I'd like to say is me and my brother have spent almost our entire lives... Hold on, I'm shaking too bad. There you go. Uh, don't worry, I should really bad. Uh, me and my... Samuel, would you bring me my Sprite? ...have spent almost our entire lives uh, learning this as a trade, and we're probably not even half as good as our dad. Oh, yeah. But, you know... We, we do, you know, we still do what we can, but the thing is, is if you're not able to do, like, show car material, if you're not able to make your project into a Thanks. show car, don't get discouraged when you can't, because making a show car is, is not a fun hobby task. Mm -mm. You have to be a professional in order to do it. Yeah, it, I am a professional, and I'm still learning how to do it. Being a perfect, being a perfectionist takes the fun out of it. Yes, exactly. So the thing is, if you're wanting to like make some money off of it or whatever, you know, you do have to kind of be a professional, but you don't have to make a show car. In order to okay, let me interrupt you for a second. The car we're building right here is a show car. The customer is putting the money in it to make yes, a show car. Yes, this is going to be a show car. How many donuts is he going to do in this car? Zero. How many burnouts is he going to do in this car? Zero. How much fun is he going to have in the car? Zero. Now, how, he'll have fun he'll with have the fun car. With the car. Taking it somewhere carefully, babying it to a show. Exactly. Parking it under a tree. He's not going to take it up to the drag races. You know? Right. If you want to have fun with the car and it still look good, you, you can do that. You can't make. There's a difference between a good looking show car and a show car. Well, how For perfect was the, the green car? The green car wasn't perfect at all. No, y'all painted over dents and everything. Exactly. Yeah, that you know? more fun with so that car than. The thing is, if you want to have fun with a car, it doesn't have to be show car quality. Right. That's the main thing. Well, if for car guys out there that like stomping the gas, you don't have to make it perfect. Yep. Yep. And, it, and the deal is, is there's always going to be critics. You need to understand the better your car looks, the harsher the critics are. Yep. Yeah. 
you know, and if you if you don't like critics putting your car down, you need to understand. Okay, I want, here, take this right quick. I want to tell y'all a story, and then we'll we'll end with that. And thank you for joining us. Honestly, if you like our channel, man, please click like and subscribe. We're we're up to seventy something subscribers. That's awesome. Too. We appreciate it so guys. much. Uh, if you would, man, share this video. Uh, I know we're a little bit different. Uh, we're hickish out the wazoo, but we're good people. Everybody needs to get out of the wazoo, right? Hey, every, at least everyone around here likes us. So if that gives you a good indication. We are very famous in our town of 500 people. Exactly. We are very locally famous. There but you go. I want to tell you all a story. Talking about that taking the car apart. Don't know. But I took the car apart one time, and I haven't yet put it back together. I took it apart 20 years ago, but it's mine. But, but uh, one thing is, is uh, are you good? All right. Sorry, I just have that's all right. Uh, but anyway, when uh, I bought a car for parts, I have a 1972 Satellite Sebring uh, 440. Man, that thing was a lot of fun. But I, I had drum brakes, and that scared me. So I bought a car because it was a 72 Cornette, and it had disc brakes. Uh -huh. So the guy had a lot of money. In it was another one of those where a guy invested thousands of dollars in a project that he decided to uh, not finish. So he sold it to us as a favor, but very cheap. Right. But uh, so anyway, the boys, Paul and Seth, how old were y'all? 14 or 15? Yeah, we were uh, 10th grade? 9th yeah. grade? 14 or 15? Pretty young. I think it was, yeah, the summer between 9th and 10th grade. Yeah. So anyway, so, I was like, guys, y'all gotta learn this. Guys, y'all gotta learn this. Pay attention, pay attention. Y'all learn this. And they were like, I was like, y'all need to learn to paint. Well, then anyway, so, uh, like, they were wanting to paint something, so I said, well, hey, go paint that old four-door car, because I'm thinking, you're going to go ruin it. Right. You're you. going to learn some lessons. So what they done was they brought the car in. They didn't fix it then. They d it. Samuel got in on some of that. I got a video of Samuel when he was, like, this tall out there with a D8. It was so cute. It was so cute. So this was tall. What, was, what are you filming? It was, like, this tall. Oh, yeah. This point of view. This point of view. But uh, now he's taller than Paul. Yeah. Right? But anyway, they pulled the car up to the door. They didn't even pull it inside. They, they sanded it with 240 to DA paper. We painted the top with spray on bed liner so it looked like vinyl. Right. Uh, took every ounce of green paint in the shop, mixed it together. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. But uh, we're fixing to start. Matter of fact, I got a hold of the guy in Minnesota who still has the parts. He's just waiting on us. Nice. So, uh, but anyway, uh, they mixed all the green paint together, painted the car, dents and all. Well, anyway, by the time I realized, man, this car's going to look pretty good, we painted it flat black. We masked off some digital stripes like a any car, you know, new, new, new car. Yep. Kind of like an AAR style. And then I painted the hood black, put the dual scoops on the hood. They painted that thing green, jacked it up, put 50s on the back, put a wing on it. It went from being a parts car to a priceless artifact. <laughs> yeah, a family heirloom. But what was funny was everywhere I went, you drove it down the road, people would pull up beside you and just thumbs up. You can probably find videos of the thing online because I have had people come by filming me and taking pictures. Right. Had, I've got like 30 photographs that I took of people taking photographs of the car. Right. So this four-door car jacked up with 50s, and people didn't even realize it was a four-door. It was so cool. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, you would have that jerk purist. You're getting a phone call. I am from who? Oh, I'll call him right back. Right. Yeah. This you would have these jerks would come up. Man, too bad it's a four door. Too bad it's a four door. And, and I'm like, every, but those people were so few and far between. Most of the stuff. And this is funny, man. I've told this story, but I pulled up at a gas station one day, and this little boy about this tall was jumping up and down, screaming, "Mommy, mommy, mommy! Look, 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 mommy! It's a race car." Right. And, and, like, and I was like, man, that was so cool. I mean, when you drive a cool old car, it brings joy. It brings happiness oh, yeah. into the world. It does. Because everyone likes looking at a cool old car. Yeah. People don't want to look at a white Ford or Toyota Camry. No. 
No, we have one. And I forget it sometimes. And no one walks up to us. Can I take pictures of your four-door white Toyota Camry? Yeah, like, no. man, your minivan rocks my world. But I had never seen a this, blue one before. Right? But I got to tell you this. One day I was I pulled in at Casey's in baseball. And I pulled in. I'm getting gas. And this dude's sitting there next to me. And I could see it in his eyes. He's pumping gas in his white four-door Nissan Maxima. Right. Oh. Yeah. Like it's like a Camry 2.0. I mean, you know, it's still just... Right. It's just a car. It's just a car. Nobody's going to say... I mean, I would not have said anything to him about his Maxima, right? Right, but you're not going to have a kid go, Mommy, Mommy, look, a... 2012 Nissan Maxima. Right. Like, no, you're not... Oh, you know? So anyway, I pull up to the gas pump, and this dude starts shaking his head. He's pumping gas, he's looking at my car, and he's... And I just, I just ignored him. And he said, then he goes, man, I got to ask you one question. I said, yeah, man, what's up? He goes, why did, why a four-door, man? Why, why a four-door? And I, I looked at him and I looked at his car and I said, you're driving a four-door. Right. And he goes, well, yeah. Yeah, but man, this is just my family car. This ain't my, this ain't a hot rod. And I said, well, this is my family car, except mine's cool. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and when I said that, he shook his head and kind of looked down. I said, you noticed it. Right. You know, I did not notice your white, white Nissan Maxima, Maxima. Ultima, whatever, <laughs> right. four-door, and he was like, white board well, yeah, car. And it, it was, here's the thing. If you want to build a project car, remember the movie, Super, the TV show Supernatural? Yes. Yeah. Four-door Impala. Right. And everyone Four loves that door, car. And everybody loves that car. Right? There's so, no, yeah. Yeah. Man, long wheel base pickup truck. We have a long wheel base Dodge pickup truck, all painted. Everybody loves it, man. I get more compliments. So what I'm saying is, is when you go to buy a project car, like a 68 Dodge Charger RT. Right. Project car's $30,000. 74 Plymouth Satellite. Project car, $2,000. Right. Yep. Find out, man. You can have a lot of fun with a project car. And I know our video is going way long, but the thing about it is, man, if you want to get into it, if you want to get into this hobby, don't don't tell people that you gotta have. Oh, you need a '69 GTO Judge, right? Yeah. But a '72 Pontiac Le Mans can be bought for a fraction of the price, right? And it still has the cool factor. Yep. Right. You know. So anyway, uh, let me see that right quick. Yep. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is our first long video. Yes. Uh, we're, I've, I've uploaded some videos of a car I'm building at home. I've got the heads over here I'm porting, but this is stuff we're doing at the shop. Uh, we're fixing to go to Minnesota and get the parts to fix the green car. Green car. The green car's a legend. Yes. Yes. And uh, but before we do that, we're fixing to pull. Paul's got a '73 Mercury Montego, painted yes. like Starsky and Hutch. We're fixing to pull it up, pick some rust in the floorboard. We'll take y'all along that journey. We're going to put two Fosgate Punch 12s and a big Fosgate amp in it. Go boom. I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. Okay, so guys, uh, tell everybody goodbye. Goodbye. Click like and subscribe. And, and, subscribe. and uh, God bless y'all, man. This video yeah, yeah, yes. God yeah. God bless you guys.